Hi everyone, this is Charles here from Valves and More and Melotone Kits, and today we're going to be taking a closer look at our in development headphone amplifier. But first, caution everyone electronics and tube amplifiers can have very high voltages present, which can be lethal. Exercise extreme caution when working around them, and always consult a professional technician when in doubt. Okay. So in a previous Tube Lab video, we took a first look at this prototype of our headphone amplifier, and we talked briefly about what it's capable of and what kinds of tubes it can run. Today we're going to go into a bit more depth, and we're going to start with our original concept for what we were looking to build, then move into what the amp is currently capable of. So this all started late last year. We were putting the finishing touches on our first three kit amps, and we had a meeting where we discussed what we'd be focusing on next for development. We settled on three different amplifiers. One of them is going to be a dedicated phono preamp. Another is going to be a high-powered monoblock similar to the Yuri. And we had also been receiving a bunch of requests from Tube Lab viewers like you that they wanted to see a headphone amplifier. So for my first big project, I took on developing the Melotone Kit's first headphone amp, and I've had a lot of fun along the way. Our first concept for the amp included a small number of requirements. It had to be able to run a commonly available and inexpensive driver tube. It had to be able to drive the most demanding headphones on the market, because we wanted to make sure this was compatible with as many things as possible. It had to be compact enough to fit on a desk or a small side table. Now, obviously this isn't very compact right now, but this is just a prototype. And we did build it on the chassis for an older prototype, so the final footprint for the amp is probably going to be about half this size, although it, obviously it's going to be taller. And the other requirement was that we had to, we didn't want to use an OTL amp. We wanted wanted it to have an output transformer with multiple impedance taps so that it would be compatible with as many headphones as possible and so that we weren't compromising on it. So far we've been able to integrate each of these requirements into the design and in the case of the driver tube options we've actually gone several steps further and you know what we're talking about if you saw the last video on it. It's just it's crazy how many driver tubes this thing runs. So, so that was the original idea. Let's see where we're at now. Um, well, first of all, let's get this off the screen. Let's start looking at the power supply here. So excuse any sound here. I have to drag part of it over. There we go. Okay, so here is the power supply schematic. Let's zoom in a little bit. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that looks all right right there. Okay, so the general topology of the circuit wasn't difficult to figure out. If you've been following us on TubeLab and taking a look at our kits, you know that we love to go single-ended. That essentially means that each channel is run by a separate amplifier. Everything from the output transformer to the power transformer would be a duplicate of each channel. But here's where we made a small change. If we were to run purely single-ended, we would need two power transformers. And we wanted to keep this amp reasonably compact. And of course, one of the most expensive things in an amp is the iron, the transformers, the output and the power. So two transformers, it's going to be heavier, it's going to be more expensive, it's going to be bigger. So we decided to go with a single output transformer or sorry, a single power transformer that is then feeding two independent power supply circuits. So you can think of this amp like it's two single-ended monoblocks in one chassis sharing one power transformer. We don't think this is going to make a difference for the sound. The transformer is rated to handle the voltage and the current needed for both channels and each individual power supply has its own separate choke and filtering stages to help give us that great stereo separation that our amps are becoming known for. 
you can see that right here. So, of course, we have our diodes after the output transformer. So this is rectifying our AC voltage to DC. And then after that, we have three separate filter capacitors. We've got the first stage, C1. After that, we have our choke, which is also oversized, by the way. So that's going to give us some great fill and sound. Then we have C2 and C3. So each of these is helping to filter out the power supply ripple that comes from our rectification. Whenever you're rectifying an AC signal to DC, uh, it will it will still have a little bit of a sign to it. It'll have a little bit of a ripple in the top of the DC signal. And you can hear that if you don't filter, filter it out. And on our previous amp designs, we had two filter stages here, plus a small filter stage right at the uh, amp PCB. But we have three larger filter stages here now. And this may change in the future too. And the reason why we've done this a little bit differently now is because headphones are, they're on your ears. Uh, usually if you're listening to speakers, you're a couple feet away or, or more, depending on your setup but it's so easy to pick up on small amounts of sound in a headphone amplifier because you're literally right up against the drivers with your ears. Anything at all will be picked up. So this extra filtering really makes sure that the amp is going to be quiet and that you're not going to hear any power supply ripple. And so far this is working great. Okay, so what's next here? Um, well actually one thing to note here too is, um, first of all, the power transformer is another universal one. We like to use these universal transformers. That means it's going to work on uh, all the different mains voltages that you can get around the world. Standard 120, 220, 240. It's just going to require slightly different wiring in the final kit, but it's going to be easy to do. The other thing to remember is that all of this is subject to change. We're still actively developing this thing. It's not finalized, although I'd say it's very, very close to it. So let's bring in the main amplifier schematic now. We've seen the power supply. Here is the amp schematic. So let's start off by looking at our driver tube here. And let's zoom in a little closer on that now. Okay, so we've got a driver tube here, and the first thing that you're going to notice is that it's designed to run a dual triode tube, but these two tri triodes are always run in parallel. This is our first time using this technique in an amplifier, and originally we had planned to build a circuit like our Universal 6 or 12 SN7 and E80CC preamps that have a single gain stage using one triode and then a second triode as a cathode follower. But I've been curious about what paralleling the triodes would sound like, and boy am I glad that we tried it, because it just sounds amazing. Um, it does still have some of the benefits of lowering the output impedance of this tube going into the power stage, but it just does something to the sound that has made everything sound fantastic that's going through here. Also, because of the way that we biased it here, this tube can be one of any number of a different type. And uh, we talked about this a little bit before in the last video, but it can run the uh, 6DJ8, this, the 12AU7, the 6N1P, the 12BH7, um, 6CG7. There's a huge number of different tubes that this can run. So, Speaking of that, uh, let's see one of the other interesting features that we've done on here that allows us to run different kinds of tubes. So one of the interesting things that this does is that you can run 6 volt tubes and you can run 12 volt tubes that have a 6 volt center tap. So right here is our driver tube wiring, and I know this looks like a really complicated mess here. It kind of is. It takes a bit to wrap your mind around what's going on. 
But essentially what this is doing is we are able to switch 12 volt tubes that have a center tap so that the voltage is going to pin 9, which is the center tap tube. Which, sorry, is the center tap for the filament. And that way we can take something like a 12AU7 and run it on 6 volts, or a 12BH7, another common tube. So being able to do this with a simple switch allows you to run a larger number of different tubes. You can roll a whole bunch of different tubes in here that you just can't do in other amps that are restricted to 6 volts on 4 and 5 only. So that makes a big difference here. Okay, so what's next after the driver tube and this, this interesting heater wiring setup? Let's go back out. Let's go take a look at our power tube. Well, the power tube is the 6P1P. I'm going to grab it right here. So there's the 6P1P. We showed it off in the last video. It's a nice looking Svetlana tube. You can see the logo right there. And what this is, is a Soviet equivalent of a 6V6 power output tube. It's not exactly the same tube, but it's very close. The ratings are nearly identical, and it performs very much the same. It also has a really cool feature, and you'll see it here on the schematic. Let's zoom back in. So, you'll notice that whenever I'm marking pins for this, I say pin 3 or pin 8 can be the cathode, or pin 1 or pin 6 can be the anode. And why is that? Well, the 6P1P, it's a 9-pin tube, has 9 pins, but it doesn't need all those 9 pins. So, what the designers of the tube did was that they brought out different parts, different electrodes, to two pins. Everything but the grid is brought out to two different pins. So that's going to make it really interesting to work with and easy to work with whenever I design a PCB for it because it's going to give me a lot of flexibility about um, trace uh, spacing and keeping things like the high voltage away from the grid. It's going to make that so much easier. So it's a neat, it's a neat tube for that. And it's a pentode, but of course we're going to be running it triode strap because we just we just love to do that. We love the triode sound. We love triode strapping pentodes, um, and the sound that we get from it. And because of that, we're limiting this power tube down to um, what we were originally hoping was going to be two watts, but what we're realistically getting out of it now is about 1.7, which you know we've accepted it to be good enough here, and it it seems to be driving everything we're throwing at it just fine. So that is our power tube. What's next after the power tube? Well, the output transformer. So one of the things we agreed on is that we didn't want to go with an OTL or output transformerless design. There's a lot of amplifiers on the market that go OTL instead of using an output transformer. It has some advantages, like saving on cost, allowing a smaller overall footprint, but it isn't very flexible when it comes to driving different impedance headphones. Maybe you'll see them working best with headphones that are, or sorry, mainly, mainly you'll see them working best with headphones that are more than a couple of hundred ohms, but of course that's going to depend a lot on the amp and the tubes that are being used. We don't like the idea of an amplifier limiting the kinds of headphones that can be used with it or sacrificing sound quality in order to get them working. And also many modern headphones are fairly low impedance, just like our... where are they here? This is one of the... I should have had this better prepared. Just like our... Uh, these are our Hi-Fi Man HE400s that we've been using with it. These are a nice mid-range planar set. Sound great. These are low impedance headphones. So I believe they have an uh, impedance of 34 ohms. Um, I have to double check that, but it's somewhere in the 30s. And so if you tried to run this with an OTL amp that has uh, an output impedance of 300 to 600 ohms, it's going to sound terrible. Okay, where was I here before I went on that little little side story? Um, okay, yeah, so anyway, we didn't want to go OTL. Uh, 
we didn't want to limit the headphones that you could use with it. And we didn't want to sacrifice the sound quality. So we ended up going with an output transformer that has multiple output taps. The current one that we have has 64, 150, 300, and 600. And this is going to cover the vast majority of headphones that are out there. We've got a really high quality double pull switch that allows you to switch both channels simultaneously. And so far it's been working absolutely great. And running the Hi-Fi Mans on the 64R tap just sounds amazing. But if you switch it up to 600, or 300 even, you can really tell the difference. And an, it makes me wonder just how... Um, how good some head, these low impedance headphones are sounding on OTL amps that are really high impedance because it it kind of compresses the sound, it lowers the gain, it it just doesn't really pop out anymore. It it feels very uh, very suppressed, I guess you could say. So ours is going to be able to switch its impedance right on the top of the amplifier. It's going to be easy to do. You don't have to disconnect taps. You're not going to have multiple outputs you have to switch to. You just turn a switch to the right impedance and then there you go. And uh, it's going to work with pretty much everything because of that. Alright, so that's a look at our headphone amp, uh, a first look at the headphone amp. In future episodes we're going to look more at the final design take a closer look at some of the specific features, see some sweeps and distortion graphs, and hopefully before long you're going to be able to follow along as we put together our first test kit. Before we go though, we're also going to take a quick look at something else. So let's clear these off here. Since there's so many tubes that this amp can run, I thought it would be fun to talk about one type at the end of each video and what it was like to listen to it through the amp. Today we're going to take a look at the 12AU7 and more specifically the RCA 12AU7 clear top. Let's see if I can get that in focus on the screen here. So the RCA 12AU7 clear top is widely regarded as being one of the best 12AU7s manufactured in North America. They're a very um, striking tube, obviously you can spot them from a mile away because of the way they've done the gathering. But they're a really good sounding tube too. So I've been rolling this in the headphone amp for the last couple of days and listening to some test tracks on it. And uh, well it's sounded great so let me uh, let me go into what I was listening to. Uh, so I put together a test track playlist. It's all on YouTube Music. I'm going to link it down below so you can actually check them out. It includes some of our standard test tracks that we like to use every day whenever we're testing tubes for noise and sound quality. But I've also been putting some new stuff that I've found and enjoyed listening to while testing the headphone amp into it. Mostly it's a lot of strong vocalists, some acoustic instrumentals, but there are some wild card and some other interesting things thrown in there. So if you're curious about it, go check it out. And if you are curious about how your favorite uh, tracks would sound over this, feel free to link them down below and I'll check them out and who knows, they might even make the test playlist. So whenever I'm listening to a tube, I'm looking for all the typical things. I'm looking for bass, mid, and treble presence, clarity, how warm and detailed it sounds, if the sound felt hollow or filled, and for a quality sound stage. These of course are very subjective, so this review comes with all the typical caveats that it should come with. Everyone likes things a little bit different, and we sometimes like different sounds for different tracks, and that's why being able to roll tubes is going to be so important. So how did it sound? Well, if I had to sum it up in a few words, I'd say detailed and clear. You can easily make out low-level instruments such as faint background bass guitar, but you also pick up on tiny noises that I'm sure were never intended to be heard, like a singer licking their lips. It's that detailed. <laughs> so clear, uh, clarity and detail were excellent. 
The bass, mid, and treble were all presented well. I didn't feel like any of it was too forward or uneven. And I'd say that the one drawback that you get from so much detail and clarity is that you have to sacrifice some of the warmth and the fill to the sound that I really appreciate in a tube amp. So I would compare this tube to something like an E80CC, very, very detailed, very technical, or something maybe like a Tungsol 6SN7GTB. Um, I'd say, obviously, the sound is going to be different, but they're sort of in that same category of just having an incredible amount of detail and a great sound stage. So if you're chasing detail or playing back a track that already has lots of warmth already in the mix, then this might be a great option for you. Okay, well, that's enough for today. I better get back to the development work. Stay tuned for the next episode. This is Charles. Stay safe. Have fun and happy listening. See ya.